All right, we're gonna do a uh, quick build on the frame and FPV pod of the Flynosaurus Zeus HD. Um, one thing you're gonna notice is I got a, a, an assortment of uh, 3D printed parts here, camera cover, two camera mounts, the uh, Tauglis antenna mounts may or may not fit the Connex um, racing antennas. I don't know anything about that. And some spacers. Um, everything here I 3D printed off of the Thingiverse, which I'll actually put in the um, description below. Uh, the retail kit, however, did not come with these spacers, and these antennas were actually designed a bit different. Um, so that's actually one thing that's a little bit new with this. Uh, one thing I did actually before I made the video is I went ahead and pushed two of the spacers that came in the kit into the camera cover already. Um, it is actually, and it can be a little difficult to get those in and getting them back out is um, not really worth it. <laughs> so once you get those in, they're in. Um, the larger side is gonna be the bottom. The one that uh, is a little bit thicker. It's the easiest way to say that, I guess. Um, so let's do this build real quick. Um, one thing, you want to no notice? Uh, you're going to notice right off the bat is the antenna mounts. I actually already put uh, some Phillips screws inside there. But one thing that you want to be aware of is the um, locking indentations need to be facing outward, like that. So when you mount them, and by the way, when you screw this down initially, until you completely build the FPV pod, do not screw these down all the way you will have a heck of a time getting everything uh, fit together correctly because you need you will need to rotate these. So go ahead and screw that in there. Leave it a little loose so I can rotate it around a little bit. Um, there are multiple mounting holes on here it looks like. However, I've only used the middle. I can't honestly see any reason to use any of the other mounting holes. I wouldn't, I mean, maybe maybe you have a reason. I'm not really sure. Uh, this should be the uh, ribbon cable connector should be on top. That indicates the top of the camera. So you see, I will get this a little bit so that works. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention is there are two different types of these mounts. There is the wide angle mount and the regular mount. The regular mount is actually a lot thicker um, this one is uh, a little bit thinner, but if you're using the wider angle lenses, the 1.49 millimeter lens, to keep this out of view, um, it actually protects it very well. So, like I said, make sure you get those pushed in there, and that is going to be the bottom. And I'm just going to go ahead and line this up, and I recommend only screwing in one side initially because you will be doing a fair bit of work on the FPV pod. And starting out, you're not really going to need to screw anything down completely initially. Make sure you don't cross thread. Uh, when you do actually finish it, I recommend taking the screws out, adding a little bit of Loctite, just in case it um, ever actually vibrates loose. So that's starting starting that there. The camera, again, want to make sure that the connector's on top. And then what you want to do is just make sure you get that in there, the correct, the correct orientation. then you'll be able to put the other side on and screw it down right now if you want to. Uh, I'm gonna actually wait on that. This is the VTX mount. Pretty simple design. It's gonna actually screw on here. You get uh, four 1.5 millimeter. I'm not sure the length. I wanna say they're probably eight or 10, 10 millimeter. 10 millimeter, but they're 1.5 millimeter Allen. I actually have a bit for that right here, and it's going to come with four uh, little screws. Again, during the, this probably isn't going to show up on camera very well, during the final installation, make sure you lock tight it down. 
you do not want to run those with that Loctite. You're gonna have a bad day. Uh, one side is longer than the other on this BTX mount. You'll see there's a longer, um, longer gap between the actual locking indentations. Um, the side that's the uh, shortest, I guess you would say, is what's going to be going up top. So orientation is very important. I had a few people asking me questions about that. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And the way the VTX is going to mount, it's just going to sit right on top with the antenna holes facing up. And then what I'm going to do real quick, I'll just screw it down. Actually. Again, on final installation, Loctite, Loctite, Loctite. You don't want to not Loctite this and, oh dear. You don't want to lock, not Loctite this and then have it uh, possibly vibrate loose mid-flight on you. Um, one thing that I do when I'm uh, doing these builds, I actually like to put a little M3 nut in between this as a spacer. Um, it is absolutely not required, but that's one thing I like to do. And if you are not using a spacer, that's fine. Just make sure you don't over tighten it and start bending it or breaking it or anything. There's really no reason to over tighten it, especially if you're using Loctite. The pressure will hold it in place, no problem. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention on the arm covers, this is actually the top. I initially thought that these might be the top, but no, that's not the case. And these are mirrored on each other. So they actually, they're, they're not, uh, it's not symmetrical, but they are, they are mirrored. Um, and as far as the frame goes, you will notice one side is more cornered than the other one. The other one's more, I don't, I don't even know how to describe it, soft, I guess you would say. Um, so there's really no right or wrong way for the front to be. However, I personally like the front to be this just because it's a little different. Um, and I dropped. I dropped a nut. All right, there we go. Okay, so that's in place. Um, another thing you're going to want to do, I actually should have mentioned this before I did this, but um, you want your camera to be on the top, which is going to the, the camera connector be on the top, you want your power connector to be on the bottom. So when I go to do something like this, you'll see it go basically. Oh, and this might on your initial put your initial push in it might be a little more difficult. Uh, actually mine this is the second time I put this in, so it wasn't actually that bad. Um, you'll see this is how it's gonna go on top. Pretty simple. And what I'm going to do real quick is put this over it.
Remember I said to keep the camera loose specifically so you can get it lined up correctly. Oh, there we go. Good stuff. Swap back to my 2.5. I'm sorry, 2.0. screw this in all the way I'm just putting them putting them on to hold it together okay and the next thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to throw in the antenna mounts uh, if you do have the town glass antennas what I recommend doing just cutting up an old credit card Adhere to it, good, good to go. Um, there really is no right or wrong way to mount this in here. Some people, some people uh, just go ahead and throw it in here um, and have the uh, cable hanging out the top. I personally don't like that. It uh, takes a little finagling, but you can actually get it inside there. I've done it a few times. But that's my recommended way of running it. Um, it does take a little bit, like I said, of finagling, but you can get it in there. Uh, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to get it all the way in there for purposes of this video because pretty much once you get it in, um, it's pretty much as, as difficult to get out. But again, you can run it through the top. Most people do. Then run the cable out the side. There's two different towel glass, um, mounts. There is this one, which is the angled mount, and then there's one which is a straight mount, and it has the actually solder point right here at the end and sticking out. So you can do that multiple ways. And it's honestly the same thing with the other one. You can get it in there, you can run it out the side, do a few different things. Be a little creative there. Uh, another thing here, when you go ahead and when you're ready to go ahead and mount this, Again, your kit may or may not have this new spacer, but basically the intent is you put it at the end. Then you put this through. You put this through. and you put the end cap on. And sorry if you hear my cat meowing in the background. One of my cats just meows all the time. Now, you're gonna basically when you when you go to do this, you can uh, wind up the coil the coil up the antennas in here. Now, another reason why I said to leave it a little loose is so you can actually just slide this in there which I seem to be having a little bit of a problem with. Uh, let me loosen this up a little bit. There, 
that fits in. Tighten that up a little bit so it actually stays in place. Then you can screw it down. Again, I'm not going to tighten it down all the way. There's... And uh, just to restress my point on the Loctite, I had a, at one time I had a motor come off mid flight. So ever since then, if I'm dealing with metal to metal, Always, always, always Loctite. So you'll notice I put the uh, longer antenna on top. There really is no right or wrong way to do this. Uh, I just happened to see one of Flynosaurus's demo demo pictures um, for a build that they were doing, I think for Gill, and I noticed it was sticking up. So I decided to adopt that. Now, after I built it, I figured, hey, this is actually a good idea because, I mean, one, you can pretty much just, it doesn't really matter, and it, it, it'll move for you. Um, you can leave it sticking up like that if you want. You can leave it here, leave it here, whatever. The best part is, when you finish mounting this, if it smacks all the way back, this will not hit any props. Uh, with the long antenna on the bottom, it still won't hit any props, but if you bang into anything, the antenna you know, go back and forth, and if it bends over to the side, it can actually hit your props. So I prefer running it like this. And I think it looks pretty pretty nice as well. Um, one thing that you're going to notice, and a few people have commented on, you cannot actually access the USB port currently. However, I have talked to Josh at Flynosaurus, and as uh, he's actually getting new plates cut, and he is replacing them for every purchase. Um, I'm not sure about secondhand purchases, but I know if you were, if you bought it directly from him, he will replace it free of charge, no shipping cost to you. You'll be getting new plates. All you gotta do is request it. Um, really, that's only gonna be needed for uh, certain people if you're gonna be rebinding. I'm, I always run three identical quads. I love racing. And one time uh, last year, I was at the uh, Multi-GP Finals in Bakersfield. I actually had a few dissimilar quads, killed my main, and every everyone after that did not fly right. There was something wrong. So ever since then, I always built three identical quads. And yes, that does mean I have three separate Connex uh, VTXs and cameras. It was quite an investment, but I like what I I like what I do. So again, that's how you want it. USB port. You will be able to get that. Uh, you will be able to get that working. Uh, alternatively, if you want, you can Dremel it down. I have not. That's totally up to you. Um, and then again, when you are finished, Loctite. Pretty sure I didn't mention that before. Loctite, Loctite. And when you do get the camera angle you want, you don't need to like ridiculously tighten this down, but. So you get a little resistance on both sides. And, and just tighten it up until you get it to where you want it. So there's that. And then just remember uh, the direction that you ended up wanting for the front because since this is symmetrical, you might forget. Um, I actually had to take my pot off once and I uh, forgot. Um, and I actually put it back on backwards. And that was my bad. So this part's actually fairly easy. You're just going to line it up. And then you have a bag of nylock nuts and some more screws. I personally have not found the best way to do this yet. Um, well, 
what I would have, would have, I mean, honestly, out of this entire build, this is probably the only thing that's going to bug anyone. Um, I'd recommend if you have a magnetic bit to hold the nut in place for, uh, for you, or if you're able to kind of work your way around here. If anyone has any tips or tricks for this, please let me know. I will go ahead and post it in the description. But really, this is probably the only only thing that you're going to encounter that you might have a problem with. And you're just going to go around and do it on every side. You have the room, you can actually put your finger in between and get it going like that. Depending on how your build is, you may or may not be able to do this. And honestly, once you get the first one in, it's not, it's not uh, that difficult because you'll already have it sitting sitting on. So, got that on. The front's actually a lot easier because there is more room to work with. Um, do not Loctite these. If you've never used nylock nuts, um, the Loctite actually can, over time, eat through plastic, is my understanding, um, and nylon. So, not a good idea to, to mix them together. And when you when you get everything done, as far as that goes, just tighten it down all the way across, and you're good to go with that. Um, you should get a battery strap with your kit. Uh, at least I did with my original retail kit. These are just my uh, these are my extras that I bought after the fact. Uh, it will just slide in between here, and then just go through and loop it back, and it'll actually fit pretty great. So if you tighten everything down, you'll be good to go. The camera um, lens, if you're actually using the 1.49, you'll notice that this is, there's no way that's going to get hit ever. The uh, regular lens or the GoPro style lens, that will come out towards the end a little bit. But there is a, there is one that's more uh, actually thicker. This is intended for the wider angle lenses. There is one that's more thicker that's intended for the uh, smaller angle lenses. The, like the stock lens, for example. And that's it. And other than you know running your electronics and stuff, which I mean, I'm not going to do a full build because everyone does full build. But there you go. I love this frame. Uh, you see a lot of my other videos. I have, um, I think I probably have three or four of my uh, racing videos up from recent races. The system's perfectly clear, absolutely love it. This is probably the strongest frame I've used. Uh, it's 3.5 millimeters uh, all around, including the FPV pod. Uh, it is a little weighty, uh, but honestly, that shouldn't be a big deal for anything or anyone. I mean, my, my all up with battery, um, and I use big batteries, the uh, Turner Geographian 1500s, uh, which are, I think, 150, 160 grams. My all-up weight with battery is 500 grams or so. Really great build. And hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you.